Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Good morning, everybody. This is Howard Fox, and I am so glad you're here with me this morning on the Success Insight podcast. Today's guest is Tulip Chowdhury, and Tulip is a freelance writer and retired teacher whose work has previously appeared in newspapers and magazines. And as you know, on the Success Insight podcast, we love authors. And it was very exciting when Tulip reached out to us and the work that she does in her novels and her freelance writing and her poetry. We were really excited to have her as a guest today. Let me share a few more tidbits of information. Tulip's previous publications included collections of poems, short stories, essays, and some compiled works of fiction, poetry, Poetry, and her latest work, which we're going to talk more about, is Visible, Invisible, and Beyond, and a poetry collection, Red, Blue, Purple. And they're all available now on Amazon, and we'll provide links to that in the show notes. So it is a pleasure to welcome Tulip Chowdhury to the Success Insight Podcast. Good morning, Tulip. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it is a pleasure. So excited that you are here to join us this morning. So I'm hoping you could share a little bit about your background, more in depth, obviously, than I provided, because writing has been a part of your life, sounds like, for quite a while. So please share with our audience some tidbits about who you are and what you've been doing. Actually, writing began with me from very early when I was left with my grandmother by my parents as a baby. I grew up as a scared bug, always scared of everything. So my grandma started to make me write as soon as I could learn to write and write letters and just write what I feel, sort of. And I used to write letters back when I lived in a village of Bangladesh to London and everywhere, America, where we had relatives and within the country, sort of making me feel more the presence of people than the absence of my own parents. So writing became a way of life for me to share my life. And it was a beautiful village where I grew up. So nature and people and the connection, all this came to be my source of writing. Thank that's, you. That's a wonderful question. Oh, th- yeah. And I tell you, it's, it, it really, it kind of tugs on your heart because I, you know, I'm thinking in today's society with computers, I mean, you and I are virtual right now. You're out on the East Coast. I'm in Chicago. And we're so used to writing on computers and talking on cell phones. And I think the art of writing, taking the time to write a letter, a note to someone, we're losing the preciousness of that. Totally. I totally can grasp that. The the tangible touch when you write on a paper is very different from when you click on the keyboard of the computer. But we accept changes, but definitely it's very fortunate that I have experienced the art of writing. And when I started writing as a teacher, I used to write in newspapers. I used to write on the typewriters. So that was another experience doing the manual typewriters. As a teacher, what type of education were you involved with? Was it young kids, older kids, adults? I taught between in the middle class children, between uh, one to five. And it was English literature, language, creative writing. So I taught in a school, English medium school for all levels for long over 15 years. Okay. And you mentioned too about the newspapers. How did you get involved with journalism and writing in that genre? I mean, I started publishing from very early age. And again, around 13 to 14, I started to write for a children's page in Bangladesh called Bangladesh Times. Mm -hmm. And it was the joy of seeing my work. I used to send in drawings too. So just seeing them in print and waiting the period, if it's going to be, it's going to be. That was the more exciting part. So when they were published, that is kind of became an addiction. Then I, as I moved on, I began to write for women's pages in different newspapers and it has remained forever you know to send to the editors and hope the editors will like it and just wait for the paper to come you know i can totally appreciate that those thoughts about the anticipation of waiting i years ago i paid my way through school many years ago actually when i first went to university i did wedding photography at the time it was all film and i remember the anticipation of seeing the work 
that I produced. It was scary. It was very nerve wracking because you you know it was easy with film to have something not work out. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. You know, there was a lot of emotion there. But with your work and right, you know, writing, sending something to the editor, having mm-hmm. accepted, seeing it in print, and then sharing it with your friends and family, that, that is definitely a feeling of joy. And it's like, wow, this is me. I mean, that's truly a legacy too. I think. Yes, Howard, thank you so much for sharing your story. And the other thing is, one thing I noticed with other writers also, I mean, I never saw my work as selling. I always saw it as a fun to share my world with. So, but the funny thing is when the first book I published began with, I was in a crucial point of life and suddenly the fear of death kicked inside me and I had three kids then. And I thought, look, if I die, the newspapers and everything will be lost and they won't ever know. Well, then mom used to write. Then I sold all the gold I had from a wedding gift from my parents and published the first book because I thought if I wait for a mainstream publisher, he's never going to publish it. Not in Bangladesh, writing in English. We didn't have publishers then. So I did what I had to do. I sold my gold and published my first book called Raindrops, poetry, thinking if I die, my children will have a book on their shelf. Oh, very much so. And, you know, I've had this conversation with other guests and this idea about legacy. Yeah, you know, what yeah. what is it we want to leave behind? I mean, you've fortunately have kids and I don't know whether there's grandkids in, in the picture, but just the idea of your kids are your legacy. And someone like myself who is single, not been married, no kids, that's a whole other issue. And I think it's, you're in the wrong profession to talk about that with me. Maybe not. If you've got poems on love and relationships, then maybe there's something there. This idea of legacy, though, is so important. And, you know, I think it matters what we leave behind and what will people think about us when they hear our name or see something we've written, produced. And for me, I I would like it to be something that people smile. I guess that that, the simplest emotion to smile, make people happy. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yes, I mean, that was kind of leaving my kids. But in the greater world, I mean, writing has also been sharing with the greater world. So now I feel more confident with living to the world because it's, you know, in the digital area. And this is a big difference from where I was telling about my children. Now I have all these on internet and I feel like I'm living a whole world that I came and I saw the different with my own eyes. But for having a family or not, I think it's totally we each and every one of us contribute to the world and it makes the world as it is all of us together. No one has to do anything or should or should not. I give that total freedom to people to be who they are, how they choose their life. You know, I would love if there's anything you could share with us, perhaps one of your, I know we're going to talk about the new books, but you know, you've got a a large collection and there's a particular book, perhaps a poem you could read to our audience. I think, you know, we would definitely appreciate that. I would appreciate that. Oh, thank you, Howard. That's awesome. So I'm going to read something that really is from my soul. I mean, I love the nature and I love to be loved and to love back in return. So this poem kind of working both ways. I'll read it from my book called Nature and Love. Cling to you. You be a tree and I can be an ivy surrounding you, clinging around your branches and your trunk. I cannot live without you. So we stand together in our close embrace. Together we drink, drink rainwater, bathe in the moonlight, sway with the wind while our leaves dance to our heart's rhythms. The tree and the ivy, together we stand in the nature's world, a world of our own. Thank you. Oh, that is beautiful. And to our listeners, I recommend that you close your eyes as you listen to Tulip's poem and just take it in. That was wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. That that, that is a fantastic gift. Thank you. It's just like the summary, isn't it? (laughs) Please. (laughs) Oh, most definitely. You know, there's something about, you know, in the springtime here, at least in Chicago, sometimes it goes right from winter to summer, Mm -hmm. sometimes there's spring, but, you know, early in the morning, you know, when you first get up, it's starting to warm, there's like a smell in the air. And mm-hmm. it's yeah. an intoxicating smell. Oh, and totally. 
and just visualizing what you've just read and thinking, you know, the smell in the forest and it's just truly intoxicating. And I know there's professionals out there that study, you know, the brain and the chemicals and the endorphins Mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank Thank you again. Howard, thank you so much. Yeah. In the time we have left, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your books. Now you have you have two of them. Uh, one is Visible, Invisible, and Beyond. It's your novel that was released in 2014, mm-hmm. and now you have uh, Red, Blue, Purple Poetry from the Heart. Share with us about the origins of, of, of these two books. So let's me begin with Visible, Invisible, and Beyond. It's a metaphysical fiction, and it deals with the soul. I have always been very curious about the soul that lives inside us and always try to imagine how it was without the body or how it could be. So in that book, I have created two worlds in which there is one for the humans and the other is for the souls, another world where they are getting ready and come to the human body. So why and again there are immigrants. I mean one is the Bangladeshi American, the, they are back and forth between America and Bangladesh. But the souls as they interact, is they fall in love, they have a family, but there are always the souls connect individually. Like if I am talking to you, but our souls may be talking to each other in a different way. So there are two aspects of us in the whole book, but it is a love story. It is a sort of an immigrant story, but it's a soul's world. So I have tried to vision it in that way. That's brilliant. And tell us about your book of poetry, Red, Blue, Purple. So that book, the Red, Blue, Purple, is also, again, the poetry that comes to my mind. Sometimes I wake up and I just get the lines into me. And if I don't have a pen and a pencil, then later on, I just write it down. So poetry comes to me somehow. I don't know. I mean, it's they just come through me. And if I am, I like to put them and I have actually, I think, three poetry collections after the, that one, I made two more. Oh, and I am also writing on the medium. So I share, that's a wonderful platform where I share my writing. Now, is this platform, is this available for folks like me, our guests, or is this private to like a, a writing circle? Or If you just Google Medium, the writing platform, it comes along and you can be a member for a free or you can be, be a paid member, but it's a wonderful platform to read and to write. That's wonderful. We'll put a link to the platform to direct our listeners to it. Yeah. Tulip, I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to share some background and a little bit about yourself and, and most definitely the sharing your gift of reading a poem for us and talking about your two books. And, and I wish you much success with your continued writing. And I certainly hope that others who are going to listen to these podcasts will appreciate the, the gifts that you have provided to us. So thank you again for being on the Success Insight podcast. Any parting thought you'd like to share, Tulip, for our guests? We have this little saying, my partner and I, is called Insight to Go. Any parting thought? before we sign off with you today. So it was a pleasure to be on the podcast and thank you so much for sharing your stories also, Howard, and to the writers, to all around me and we let's create the beautiful world and weave all the crafts we can to know and the world through the words or any creative forces we have. Thank you so much. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. It is a fantastic way to start the day, at least on my end, because I was gifted with Tulip being a guest today. And just, I I really, that the poem she read, Nature and Love, really resonated for me. There's a park around the block. I think I'm going to go take a walk right after the show is over. Yeah, (laughs) thanks. So, Folks, join us on for our future episodes of the Success Insight Podcast. Please like us, follow us. If you know this episode with Tulip resonated for you or another episode resonated for you, you know, please leave us a comment. If you have ideas of other guests, especially authors, we would love to hear from you. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there and have a phenomenal day. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.